Hello developers, how are you doing today? Hope you are doing great learning and sharing things. Today we are going to talk about a very good topic which is related to the web performance. No one wants to do things with delay. Neither you as a developer nor your customers or users. Everybody wants the things to get loaded faster. They want to move from one page to another page much much faster way. There are various ways to take care of that in web development. We are going to talk about one such way today. Hey, this is Tapas. This is your teacher. I keep teaching you JavaScript, React, full stack, content creation, blogging, open source on my YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please go ahead and press the subscribe button. I hope you like my content. I hope you learn something conceptually. You learn something fundamentally. All right. So coming back to the topic today, we are going to talk about code splitting. We are going to learn about code splitting, what code splitting is about and how does it help. Today's video is not going to touch this much code, though we are talking about code splitting. I want to keep it conceptually as a short video so that next time when I'm introducing you to the code using dynamic inputs, using lazy uh, thing on React, using suspense so that you understand that under the hood at the background code splitting is happening. And this is what close put code splitting is about. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before you get started with code splitting, let us understand what is source code and bundling means. So there is a term in programming language or programming uh, software engineering is called bundling. So let's understand what exactly bundling means because code splitting has a lot of things to do with bundling. Okay. Now when you are writing source code, you will be writing source code in various ways. You will be having some JavaScript files in your web application. You will be having some CSS files. You might be having some TypeScript files. You have a bunch of files which are also kind of linked with each other. In some TypeScript file, you would have used some CSS, some JavaScript file, you would have used some CSS. In some TSX file, you would have called one JavaScript or there is an external NPM maybe, which is having bunch of JavaScript, maybe bunch of CSS, which you are consuming and using in your web application. Fine. So if I go open your source code repository of your project, I'll be most likely to, uh, you know, we'll find that some JavaScript file, some CSS file, some TypeScript file, some HTML file, something is there, you know, over there. Now, when things come and get rendered on the browser, on the end web browser, which your, your customer sees, your user sees, they are not going to see this individual JavaScript file. They are not going to see this individual CSS file. They're not going to see this individual TypeScript file. What they're going to see, they're going to see a combination of this as a functionality that is rendering on the web page. Now, who is going to make this combination? Who is going to combine this JavaScript, this TypeScript, this CSS things all together and create a bundle so that that bundle can actually run on the end browser, not your individual JavaScript, CSS and TypeScript. And this is required because in the olden days, you know, maybe long, long back, probably a decade back, you know, we probably had a very smaller application like where there is a JavaScript, one single JavaScript file, one you know, monolithic HTML file, one big CSS file, and that's it. That's it. It's, it's like something that we load on the web browser and get our job done. But today we have learned to do things in a modular way. We know, okay, there is a home page, so this is home page related files. We know there is an about page, this is about page related file. There's a registration page, this is a registration page related file. So we know to categorize things and make them modular. And as we know to make them modular, of course, we have the demand of creating more JavaScript file, more CSS file, more HTML file, more TypeScript file and so on. But at the end, when everything is coming together and running on your browser, it has to run as a bundle. It has to be a combination of every module that you're creating and has to run over there. That's where we have something called bundler. Okay, that's why we have something called bundler. What bundler does? The bundler bundle, bundle all your JavaScript, all your CSS together and put a combined output of all these things, a combined JavaScript file and a combined CSS file. And this combined JavaScript file, combined CSS file or a combined HTML file, whatever it is, that's what gets loaded on the browser. And that's where customers start interacting with your entire application. So at a code base, there might be separate modules and things like that. But at the end, when it is coming on the browser, it is actually a combination of everything. Now, what are these bundler? I'm sure that you would have heard some of the names. The, some of the names are Webpack, you have, you know, Browserify, you have Rollup, you have Parcel, things like that already exist. Very popular ones, the bundler, which actually help you to create a bundle. That bundle gets shipped 
and run on the browser. Okay, so this is about the source code and bundling. Now, as we know that there is a bundle, and if you imagine that if your application grows in size, you are using more number of external libraries, NPMs, you are using more number of code because you are adding features. So what is going to happen? At the end, the bundler is going to output the massive JavaScript, combined JavaScript, a massive combined CSS file. And when the JavaScript file and the CSS file, the size grows, what happened? When the size grows, your browser will take that longer to download that file and render your application. Okay, why are we talking about download? Okay, come out of localhost, guys. At the end of it, you will be putting this JavaScript file and CSS file somewhere on the some server, either on somewhere in the cloud or on CDN, somewhere you'll be putting it, right, on some server. And your client might be sitting somewhere, you know, other side of the country or other side of the continent. And when they hit the URL, you will be downloading this bundle, this JavaScript and CSS bundle, all the way through the where, and you will be actually downloading on the customers or the user's browser. And the time is going to take, it all depends on what is the size, what is the latency, what is the speed of the internet the client is having, based on many factors that it might be very fast or it might be very delayed. But one of the factors for sure is the size of this bundle. If the size of the bundle is MBs, is too big and things like that, is going to take much, much more time. So what will happen when your client is trying to access this? They are going to see something like this. It's probably loading, 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 loading. And one fine time, finally, your page appears. And you don't want this to happen because you as a user, if you go to Amazon, if you go to any other retail site and trying to do this, you will be hating it, right? You don't like waiting. So, so you, as your customer, you know, they won't like waiting. So that's why we can do something to improve this as a performance. And that's where we are going to talk about something called code splitting as a conceptual point today. So understand this as a conceptual point. We are going to get started with some coding to understand like how we can do code splitting with code and we'll be seeing live application, we'll be building live application with and without code splitting and see the advantages of it in the upcoming video. Okay, so now the concept. Concept is the king. So we have to understand the concept first. So we again, we have the bundle. What code splitting does basically, with code splitting, we can actually split this bundle into different chunks. Okay, think about this, right? You have a platter full of food, you know, maybe sweets, you know, in, in, in somewhere and you cannot really eat all the sweets all alone, right? At, at one point of time. So what you'll be doing is like, now you feel like eating some sweets, you will pick up, eat it, store the sweet, sweet somewhere. And again, in some point of time, after some point of time, sweet or pizza, whatever, you know, again, you feel like taking it, you again eat it and again, pull it somewhere. So you, on demand, you can actually fetch your food. Similarly, on demand, you can fetch the pages, the content of the pages that is required from this bundle and only show that to your customer, only pull that for your customers. So it means that your code base is not reducing, code base is still same, but what you are loading on your customer space, what you are loading on your user's browser, that is what is changing, right? So with code splitting, we can decide on which entry point, we can decide logically where we want to split the code in such a way, the bundle in such a way, okay, in this case, not the actual source code, by the way, the bundle in such a way, so that for that entry point, only that much code from the bundle gets loaded for the customer on, on their browser. Understood? So that is what code splitting is. So it means that I am going to split it into chunk one, chunk two, chunk three, chunk four. All right? Now what I can say is like, okay, when the home page gets loaded, let's load it from the chunk one. Okay? If customer moves to another page, let's load it from the chunk two. If customer goes to another page from chunk three, if customer goes to another page from chunk four. So if you are seeing that in the previous example, when we saw, we were loading the entire bundle on the customer's web browser at once. And we are incurring delay because there are a lot of things, you know, you have the home page, you have the blogging page, you have side hustles page, you have growth page, and customers are not seeing three out of four pages. They are just seeing the first front page, but you're still loading the code for it unnecessary on the browser. You are putting an unnecessary load. Instead of that, what you can do now, you can actually split this bundle into different chunks and logically you split it. That is up to us as a developer to decide how do I going to split it. I'm going to teach you that in the next video. And now based on that, you load the chunk and from the chunk, customer is getting their web page, 
they are not actually loading all other chunks because they are not requiring it. Now once they move it, in parallel they can load other chunk and they can actually make it ready and go to the next pages. That's what we have seen in this particular thing. So if I just go back again, so from chunk 1, the first page, it's not loaded the chunk 2, chunk 3, chunk 4, chunk uh, 5 or whatever it is. When it goes to the next, maybe the next route I'm going to, it's going to uh, load my block page, then going to load my side hustles page, load my growth page and so on. So that's the main concept about code splitting and I hope that you understood the concept well. If you have got the concept well, it will be very easy for to now understand how dynamic import works. You know, I always say, I keep saying, concept is ahead of syntax. You can always learn syntax by Googling, chat GPT or whatever it is. You can learn about syntax of dynamic import any day. But how dynamic import works under the hood, how suspense and lazy works under the hood in React, you won't understand it if you don't understand the concept of code splitting. Now you understand the concept of code splitting. I hope that you will be learning the next video in the jet speed when I'm teaching that with code and example. Until then, take a great care of yourself. It was a short video. I hope you like it. And if you liked it, please like this video. Please share it. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please put it, type it, you know, type your question in the comment section. I'll be answering them. Thank you.